Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of OTH Sports Views. I'm sports writer uh, JP Butler here at the Only in Times Herald and I'm joined uh, by OTH Sports Editor Chuck Pollock and we thought uh, this would be a good time to do things a little differently for this segment. Uh, we've been talking a lot about the St. Bonaventure men's and women's basketball teams. The women right now are amidst a week-long break after an 8-2 and two start. The men are in the middle of an 11-day break after a 6-2 and two start. And so we thought this would be a good time to uh, begin introducing some of the other topics that we would like to touch on uh, throughout the course of the year here. Um, and today we thought we would talk about the Buffalo Bills. And, uh, and so we'll start with, uh, with Chuck on the Bills. Chuck, the Bills came into their week uh, 14 meeting with Philadelphia Eagles, still very much in the playoff hunt, I think, at six and six. Um, it was a game certainly that if they won, uh, would have given them um, a pretty good shot down the stretch here. Of course, they lose it. Once again, the story in this one, penalties, uh, a lack of discipline, uh, some of the same stuff that has reared its head over and over again this season. Uh, it cost them again on Sunday. Uh, what's your assessment of that situation and just kind of its undoing with the, with the penalties? JP, circumstantially, um, all year long, and I feel funny that I've written this so frequently, but it seems like every two weeks they're playing a must-win game, and that becomes a cliche. But the problem with it is, the league is so lousy across the board. Obviously, there's some good teams, but there's so much mediocrity. Every time you come to another game, this could be a playoff-affecting game, so they're in that circumstance. So here they are, 6-6, six and six, and you think, okay, the Eagles are a team they can beat. I, even though they had beaten the Eagles, uh, had beaten the, uh, the Patriots the week before, I thought they, they might even be a little complacent, which sounds kind of weird. And uh, the Bills go in and have a very winnable game and have another disaster, penalty-wise. They got called for 15 that were marked off. Two others were called and they weren't, they weren't marked off for over 100 yards. You don't win football games doing that. If you persistently, and, and there are some exceptions, when the Raiders were great, they led the league in penalties as well. But that's not the formula for doing well. Uh, it, it, if you've got the playoffs in your sights. And so you've got these, these penalties, and, and it's not just the 15-yarders. Uh, it's not the 10-yarders that are the, the holds or the unsportsmanlikes that are 15. A perfect example on Sunday came on the very first series for the Eagles. Mario Williams gets a seemingly innocuous uh, invasion of the neutral zone penalty. And all of a sudden, third and eight goes to third and three. I'm sure it changed like the call. Yeah, happening a lot throughout the course. Exactly of the right. And that turned out to be a touchdown drive. If the Eagles don't score a TD there, do the Bills win the game? Maybe. But it isn't even the big penalties necessarily. Even penalties like that hurt. And that's been the case all year. When you have, when you have four games where you've had over 10 penalties, and certainly over 100 yards in those penalties, you're asking for trouble. Now, it's been, you know, it's, it, a lot of the penalties and a lot of other things that have just kind of uh, hurt, hurt themselves, sh shoot themselves in the foot, so to speak. Uh, you know, on Sunday it was the, the muffed punt return, which they've had a couple of this year. I think three different guys have fumbled punts for them this year. And every time Rex Ryan comes into uh, the post-game press conference and says we have to fix this, we can't do it anymore, we're going to get better at it, and then that doesn't seem to happen, both with the penalties and with just some of their own mental mistakes in these games. What do you make of that, the fact, the fact that Rex keeps saying we're going to do something about this and it doesn't seem to happen? As we're taping this, it's media day, and Rex was just effusive today. He was terrific, talked about all sorts of stuff, very much dealt with the fact that everything that's happened with this team has come back on him, as it should. Uh, when you're the guy getting $5 million a year, it's on you. And, and he admitted as much. But the return game is funny because I know all your brief life, you've been a Bills fan, and for a lot of those years, that team has persistently had outstanding kick returners. 
Now, when a, whether it's a kickoff or a punt, when the Bills are out there accepting one of those, you don't even think it's possible there's going to be a return for a touchdown. Your real concern is, oh my goodness, I hope this isn't a turnover. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, along with what you mentioned, Rex, you, you mentioned, you know, $5 million a year guy. A lot of this is going to fall back on him. This was a guy that at the beginning of the season didn't promise but was almost kind of going in that direction about talking about making the playoffs this year, ending that streak, we're going, get ready because we're going, all that kind of stuff. Here they are, 6-7. and seven. They're actually a game behind, I think, where they were – last year at this point. I think last year they were at least, it was at least another week where they still had a chance. And that doesn't seem to be the case, you know, this year, not a week earlier. What's your assessment of, of, of that situation with Rex, the whole thing, building Bully? A lot of things that have just kind of fallen short of what he was kind of getting at in the, you know, before the season started. It's really interesting because back in January when he was hired, the old saying is, uh, basically, Rex doesn't lose an interview or he doesn't lose a press conference. And that's pretty much true. I absolutely am sure he knocked the socks off Terry and Kim Pagula in that interview. Uh, he has, He's a charismatic guy. Uh, he also knows what to say. And what he said when he took the job and had his opening press conference resonated so much with people and it's interesting it's a product of the internet age uh, and the computer age that today a lot of us we just opened up our computers and we're looking back at the tape or the transcript of his opening press conference and he said some pretty galvanizing things here I know you said he didn't promise the playoffs but he came as close as you could without right. the more indicting thing I think is that he flat predicted this was going to be one of the best if not the best defenses in the league and it has not been it has not even been close and even he today admitted the fact that that team has underachieved it's on him and it's an indictment of his coaching and he said I don't consider myself a poor coach I think I'm an up above average coach the numbers don't speak to that right you mentioned the defense, I think 20th in defense for a team that, you know, I think Rex thought for sure that they were gonna, they were going to lead the league in defense this year. 20, that's obviously a far cry from what they were last year. But the, the last thing I wanna ask is six and seven now. Technically, mathematically, they're still alive, although certainly it's a long, long, long shot um, in these last three games. But three games to play. Um, as we said, I think a game behind even where they were last year under Doug Marone. And this is kind of a loaded question here, but what's what's the state of the Bills right now? Six and seven, three games to play. They've seen uh, some stuff in Tyrod Taylor. I think he's been better than a lot of the other guys that have uh, been before him. Um, there seems to certainly be talent there, uh, maybe even one of the most talented teams in, in Buffalo in a while, but again, you know, looking like they're going to be on the outside looking in. What's your just kind of state of the bills right now today well i will tell you this if you take tyrod taylor and Lashawn mccoy and put them on last year's team with that defense i think we're talking about a playoff team you're probably right and so i know that there's still a question is tyrod the franchise quarterback and, and, and that whole phrase is just so overused but he's been good enough this year and he might be the franchise guy They've scored enough this year to be in a position where their record would be playoff viable. And so the problem has been the problem has been the defense. And I somewhere, I don't know where he's living, I'm sure he's still being paid for last year, but somewhere Jim Sh Schwartz has got to be thinking, man, how about this? Thanks. They bring in this genius and guess what? Uh, and, and, and the numbers that stick out to me, JP, most clearly. That team ended last year 54 sacks that led the league. This year they've got 19 and counting with three games to play. That's they need to win out to be Doug Marone's team, which is scary. It's and it's not a phrase I thought I would ever I use. I don't think anybody. I don't think anybody would. That was Chuck Pollock's take on the Buffalo Bills. Uh, join us next week for another edition of OTA Sports Views.